Okay, we've got clip clop riders. This is question one. We're providing horse riding packages for their country property. The guests are charged $800 per weekend on the package, so that's revenue. We've got variable expenses for each package of 250 and we've got annual fixed costs of 154000 which includes some riders, instruction, uh, riders instructor's salary of 38000 Now this is, a, this is a CVP question. I can tell straight away because it talks about fixed costs and variable costs. Now the, the rest of the question says management is considering a change to the existing cost structure the riding instructor will no longer receive his $38,000 salary but will receive a $85 per guest. So what we're now looking for is obviously a comparison. If 400 packages were sold each year, would you recommend this change? Now there's a question there. So we've got a how many packages are we going to sell each year? So what we're going to have is we're going to have two things. We're going to have a existing costs and we're going to have a post or pre post costs so we're going to have two different scenarios and obviously we're going to have to make a comparison because it's asked me that question would you make this change okay so there's the key bits in my question all right let's have a look at the existing package and then we'll look at the pre pack uh, the post package so my existing package i got some revenue and my revenue is 400 times $800 per guest. So I've got 400 guests times $800 gives me $320,000. I've then got some variable costs and I've got to subtract my variable costs and that's going to be 400 by my $250. So I'm going to have 400 here times 250 which gives me a hundred thousand and so because it's less I'm going to take one from the other and I'm going to get two hundred and twenty thousand which is my contribution margin now we have to calculate contribution margins in CVP analysis because that gives me a calculation which I can now compare and then it has some fixed costs of 154,000. So it says annual fixed costs of 154. So I'm going to go less fixed cost of 154. And that's going to give me a profit. And my profit is, uh, quickly calculate, 66,000. So I've got my original, or my existing cost structure and profit. Now I've got to make a comparison. It's telling me here in my additional information the management is considering a change to the existing cost structure. The riding instructing costs will no longer receive his $38,000 salary. Now this $38,000 is included in that 154 because it tells me up there which includes the riders instructor salary of 38. So I need to make an adjustment here to my fixed cost. So I would have had 154 minus 38 equals, uh, what's that, 116. So I've got a new fixed cost of 116,000. Now I'm just going to highlight that one because I want to make sure I put that number in my new fixed costs. and. It's told me, but instead it's going to have $85 per guest. Now this is going to become a variable cost. So my variable costs before were 250, and now I'm going to include another 85. So my variable costs will be 250 plus 85, which is going to equal what's that? 335. Yep. So I've got a new variable cost as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a comparison so that we can make a decision. Now my revenue hasn't changed, it's still the same. So it's 400 times 800 equaling 320,000. We're still selling 400 packages, so my variable costs now 
So my variable cost of 3 by that equals 134. And I'm going to have a new contribution margin now of $186,000. Is my new contribution margin. Now my fixed cost, my fixed costs we decided we're going to be a lot less. My fixed costs are now 116000 And that means that if I do this calculation, I should have a profit of $70,000. Now the question I've been asked is, would you recommend this change? Okay, so, given a situation, would you like to make a profit of 66000 or 70,000? Yeah, smart business people. I'd like to make this one too. So would you recommend this change? Yes. As, because it asks you, explain why or why not, as we make more profit. Okay? And that's question A taken care of. So we've got a couple of things there. All right, question B says, identify which cost structure, existing or new, is more highly geared. So when we look at this, we, have, we, we talk about what has a higher operating leverage and explain why. Now when we look at a higher operating leverage, we're looking at the proportion of fixed costs in relation to total costs. So that's what operating leverage looks at, fixed costs in relation to total costs. So the higher the fixed cost, the higher the operating leverage. So the question asks, which is more highly geared? So, B, the existing. Which is this one? Cost structure is more highly geared. So more highly geared, reason being the higher the fixed cost, FC means fixed cost, the higher the operating leverage. Okay, so that's my question answered. Now, at the top of the page there you'll see marks. So what's my marks now? Now it's easy. Every tick you see will be a half a mark. So I'm giving you a half a mark there, 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 there. That's five. Okay. And the fixed cost is more highly geared. So that's my two marks there. So I've got 6.5, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's my six and a half marks there. And in my next question, it's two marks. So I've got to tell it the existing cost structure is more highly geared and it asks me what, uh, explain. So explaining being this and this. So that's my first question done.